We are a software development company, new to this area, but I think our technologies could be interesting for anyone dealing with geospatial data. Um, the background is that that type of data typically becomes very large. And if you want to display it on low-end devices, um, then you need to do something. And our goal typically is to display such data on VR glasses, on standalone VR glasses, um, typically using it for training applications. But let's see. So what I'm offering here is um, a data streaming solution that that supports output sensitive rendering of very large data on any device. So maybe we move on. So as I said, our background is in VR, mixed reality. We make a living basically from training applications. So typically we deal with cut data and similar stuff, but we always, um, we, we always had friends in the realm of uh, cultural heritage where Stuff like um, where a lot of interior is scanned photogrammetrically at high resolutions and so on. We're also teaming up with a company called Infralytica, who is uh, putting a lot of effort into bridge monitoring, infrastructure monitoring, also dams and so on. But if you want to capture such surfaces at high enough res resolution to actually find cracks in the concrete, then you need to have that data in high resolution. You can't simplify it. But still, we want to be able to display it on any device and meet in, this, in these environments as if, like we meet today in video conferences, but meeting in the context of these environments. So, um, so let's move on, please. Yeah, so basically, we do VR, but with a strong focus that anything that we do has a real world reference. Can we move on? Um, so here's an example. Um, this model, I also have it like it's not. I don't have it with me. It's online, uh, so we can display it. We can show it over there on our booth in the in the in the in the startup area. Um, this model is um, a landscape acquisition of Burg in the Vogtland, and it has a lot of uh, a lot of small details. So accumulating all together to 106 uh, million triangles. So you see we have these buildings in, in high resolution and we, you can go down here also to analyze cracks in the, uh, like in, the, in the walls, which is important for the restorers. And let's see what else comes. Um, oh yeah, we can go inside, of course. So everything that has been scanned inside can also be displayed. And over there we can meet with other people who are elsewhere on the world and discuss this data. And that's the general idea of what we do. So we want to make that data accessible to anyone on any device everywhere on the world and be able to, um, to meet there and navigate and interact with these environments, maybe measure something, figure out what, it, what is there, discuss uh, maybe restoration plans and so on and so forth. So can we please move on? Um, as I said, we are dealing here with 106 million triangles, 1,264K textures, and this accumulates in video RAM to 85 gigabyte. And even if you end up having your, um, uh, your graphics workstation with an RTX 4090 and you have loads of RAM available, even then that won't fit. So you need to, to do something about it. Um, and if you look at mobile devices, which are more interesting because you can carry them, you can, um, you can, see, you can have many people having them, they're more affordable, um, then we see like, okay, we got three to six gigabyte of video RAM on these devices and similar on these tablets. So if we want to access that data while on the go um, with affordable devices, maybe in schools and universities and so on, then again, we need to do something. And there are two different approaches that are very common these days. One is, well, you know, you have online servers that render the data and then stream the, the images. Besides, um, ramping up a server online is expensive. And, uh, and rendering, it because you need a graphics server online, that's actually expensive. 
and, um, and streaming that data requires a lot of, uh, say, bandwidth, which typically we don't have in Germany. Might be different in other, com in other countries, but here it's very difficult. So basically, you can only do that in local networks if you want to stream images. The other approach is, if you can switch, switch on, is to simply re reduce the data to make it fit. But that will basically get you remove all those details that you maybe want to see at some point. So the solution is, um, can we move on? The solution is um, um, output sensitivity. We never need any more data than is required to display a particular image, a particular perspective. So we want to make sure that we only render visible paths, so everything that can be called, frostum calling, um, occlusion calling, backface calling, goes away. Um, we want to make sure that we, like we never need more triangles than we have pixels on the screen, right? Um, and this, makes, uh, this means that we want to reduce the data on the fly, adapting to the, to the display resolution, and hold only the relevant data in memory. That's important. We have seen that we looked at the data set with 85 gigabytes of um, data, like uh, unwrapped in RAM, so that won't fit. So we need to make sure that the data can be streamed in and out. So we call that out-of-core um, data management. And we want to make sure that you don't need to download that whole data set beforehand. But instead, the data should be online, on an online storage that's inexpensive, and you retrieve that online. But still, you want to make sure that once you have seen it, you don't download it again, right? So we persistently cache the data. So may we move on? Um, and yeah, I want to explain a bit what we do uh, on the example of a funded project, a BMBF funded project that we ran like for three years now. It was about the um, digitization of one of Germany's most renowned museums. It's the it's the house where Johann Wolfgang von Goethe lived in Weimar. I'm from Weimar. So we were interested in that. So that's how we started, like, I think, in 2021. We had this idea, well, why don't enter read that with in VR? And we moved on. And yes, now we can do that. If you're interested, we got a few headsets over there on the booth. We can show that to you as we can show Schloss Borg and other data sets. Um, let's move on, please. So. On that example, here we have a lot less data. I think, can you please click? It's difficult not having my own clicker. So it's, that's the interior. We have seen the exterior. And if we click Move On, we see there's like 290 objects. It's only 12 million triangles. Still won't fit in your um, mobile memory. And what we make is um, please click um, that at that point, you need that resolution of the statue, maybe. And if we move on, um, the closer we get, basically, the, the more detail we get there. The important part is that we don't have just have levels of details of every individual part, but we segment everything that we have into what we call leaf nodes. That's the highest resolution of everything. And then we create a hierarchy of data. This is really very much simplified for just one object with only two levels of detail. But if, you, if we move on, um, we can see that, um, that, that this, of course, also applies to more complex settings. So here, this is just to show, like, when we are here, only the root node is basically rendered. When we go there, we will need, um, we, we will retrieve these, um, these green nodes. And here we go down to the leaf nodes. Um, and everything that is pink now basically says that it's cached. So we don't need to download that again. So let's move on. And here you see how that works on more of a landscape model. It's actually a, an old rotten ruin um, of one of those castles. In Thuringia, we have many of them. But I think here in Baden Württemberg, it's similar. And it basically continuously adapts the level of detail to make sure at any point we get the resolution that we need. And if we move on and think about more complex data sets, also something that I can show, Castle Grides, also a very large one. And we see that um, 
all of a sudden you end up with much more complex um, LOD trees, of course. The hierarchy has become more complex. And the important part is, at any point, you really get what you, um, what you need to display that particular image, that particular perspective. So let's move on, please, um, and on and on. So <coughs> what do we do? We need to do some pre-processing, right? So first, we always start semantically subdividing any data that we get because the semantic div division is important, so we don't want to lose it. And then we throw all these separate models into this level of detail processing, pre-processing, where we get this hierarchy. We currently use an open source format that has been developed in Italy at <coughs> by um, Federico Bontio. It's a very good starting point, actually, but we also see its limitations, and we are currently developing a new one, an own one, based on GLB. Um, anyway, we then get all these level of detail trees, we save them to a cloud storage, and during runtime, we retrieve that data from a content delivery network or any online storage and cache it then for lo later use. We decided to use Unity for a very simple reason. We develop that once and then roll it out to any device. So that's quite nice to do. And let's move on here. So what we, please, so yeah, so we, just one thing to think about. If we have 290 pr objects here and all of them have these level of detail trees, then of course we also need to, to manage like the memory, like which element gets how much memory, sometimes this is limited and so on and so forth. But I don't want to dive into too much detail. We, of course, all that can also be applied to cut data. Um, can we move on? And yeah, more importantly, maybe um, occlusion culling. Um, unfortunately, you can't do it on, during runtime on, with Unity currently. And it's also difficult with WebXR and so on. So it's, um, so in many cases, it's uh, very, very helpful to do that um, in a, in a pre-process. So we basically compute, um, can we move on? Please, yeah, we basically compute what is visible from which position. So we segment the space into boxes, into voxels, and then for each voxel, we specify like what is visible from there. And if we move on here, you see that more and more parts are popping up to make sure they don't reside in memory while we don't use them. Um, and if we, um, if we look at a heat map here, can we move on? Like what is visible from there? You can see that basically when you're standing here, almost nothing is visible. But of course, if you go to the doors, then from the doors you can see more. That's a very simple thing. Um, so what we gain from that is um, the possibility to provide uh, to to um, to stream that data to any device from tablets to public installations, desktops, HMDs, and anything. Um, and of course, then meet there again, because we have another networking layer that allows us to, um, to, to meet and, and, and communicate. And we can move on, oh, sorry, for all these click things. Um, so here are a few more examples. Like this is um, Gernrode, very nice one. There's a, we have a copy of the copy of the Holy Grave. <laughs> Um, and you can enter it because, unfortunately, if you're there in Gernrode in the Harz Mountains, there's this nice copy from the 13th century of the Holy Grave in Jeru Jerusalem. But unfortunately, you can't enter it because for restoration reasons. And that's why we provided them with HMDs that now you can, um, you can basically go inside while being in front of it. Um, we also have another data set, this is Castle Greitz, I've showed that earlier, 20 million triangles. Very nice one, Bamberg uh, restoration data set, um, and, and so on and so forth. And so we, as I said, we are currently developing our own format to support PBR maps or in geo-information systems, it's rather heat maps or inform additional information that you want to map on the data. You typically want to store that in additional textures. That's what we also do, and we want to improve the visual quality. 
So we recently looked at uh, different tools from others, actually, that simplify data. So this is the original data set. This is Goethe's workplace, his office. And Digitus Art acquired that. And with 1.5 million triangles, it looks like that. But if we simplify it, um, then unfortunately, we get these um, we get some of these visual artifacts, which we don't want to have. And as I said, we experimented with different tools. And we see, yes, of course, technology has evolved. And people have developed very nice algorithms to be more appearance preserving. In that sense here, this was, for example, done with Rapid Compact. And what we do is we develop this new format with, um, with an adapter to any simplification tool. So you can use any simplification tool to combine the, uh, to create these level of detail trees and then visualize them. Can we move on? So our new format will use GL GLB nodes, basically, to be more, um, to, <coughs> to use more common, uh, more common structure and also support PBR or multiple textures. And, um, and as I said, we are currently teaming up with different companies who do the simplification very well. And yeah, to conclude, we are more data implements for Unity. And we could do that for other platforms too, but for now we have it for Unity. Um, a data streaming from online sources, but you cache that. We have this out of core data management with load balancing for multiple models. We provide adaptive level of detail depending on the hardware capabilities and screen resolution. And we also support static occlusion calling with pre computed potentially visible sets. So move on. Um, so if you're interested to testing this, um, we actually provide this as a module, as a, as, as a library for Unity. And as I said, we could consider to implement it for something else. We support the build uh, render pipeline and the URP. <coughs> we can provide you with an example project if you're interested to just having a look. Um, and also the data conversion pipeline, that's also interesting. It's a lot of effort involved in preparing the data, but we, we automate that. And it's currently basically a Docker container that could be put, can be put anywhere. Like most of our clients actually want to have their data in their local network, guess what? And so we provide them with their own uh, data conversion tool, but we also go online in a few, say, weeks, months. We are in better testing phase. So um, thank you. These are the two guys who actually develop it. Um, so I'm more of the, uh, coordin on the coordination side of the company. And yeah, so if you want to test the application, by the way, um, this gets you to our release page where we have a tech demonstrator and you can just experiment and play with it.